Engine teardowns have been a staple for the channel for the better part of two years. And one of the questions I get asked quite often, what are some of your favorite engines? What engines do you really like? Well, today we're going to tear down one of my favorite engines, a Jeep 4-liter inline 6. I've been asked to tear one of these engines down many, 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 many times. And it's not that I couldn't find one. It's okay. It, they're kind of tough to find as cores. There are a lot of them out there. They are starting to get a little older. And the cores do have some value. And typically when you find a core, it's a late one that has overheating issues. I'm not trying to do any foreshadowing. I have no idea what's wrong with this core. But I was at the right place at the right time. And today we get to take a 4 liter apart. There are many reasons why the 4 liter is so well liked. The parts are really inexpensive and anything this engine could need, your local auto parts store probably has it on the shelf. They're also very easy to work on. You don't have to be a rocket surgeon with a computer machine just to service your vehicle. There's no special tools required. They're very simple. They also make pretty good power considering the low level of tech these engines have. 190, 195 horsepower, 230 foot-pounds of torque, pretty decent for that time. But I have a sneaking suspicion that the number one reason why people like these engines so much is that they don't die. They, they, they don't die. I see them with 400,000, 500,000 miles, and they run great. Now, the rest of the vehicles, eh. But the engines are fantastic. Very shameless plug. If you need a 4-liter, I have a couple of them in stock. I usually keep a couple 4-liter powered vehicles on the lot. This one is out of a TJ that we just got done dismantling, and I also have a manual XJ. I've actually had two XJs myself. I had a 4-liter auto, and I actually had a manual 4-door, four 4-wheel four drive. Should never have sold that one. Now, this is an early engine, and, or earlier engine. You can tell it's got a distributor. But the engine we're going to tear down is out of a 99-04 Grand Cherokee. It's a coil pack engine. I think it's actually, that's 02 or 01 and later, 01 and later. Regardless, those are the ones that are most prone to having overheating issues. So it'll be interesting to see what's wrong with this engine. Now, of course, like anything, there are some failure points of a 4 liter. The number one issue I see with these engines is the very porous casting can lead to overheating issues, especially in the later engines. I've seen them crack heads, blow head gaskets, but for the most part, that's the worst thing you have to deal with. Now, I did a little looking at this core, and I noticed that it has one plug in it. Yes, one spark plug in it. It's kind of weird. So we're going to see if it turns over and uh, see if it makes a full revolution. And it actually turns over pretty nice. I don't hear any bad noises. I think we'll be able to get this apart pretty easily. I guess the very first thing we're going to do is pull the valve cover off. Whoa, can't start in the back. That's how you get an infection. I did notice this engine is pretty beat up. Valve cover smashed, the coil's broken. So I bet this engine's been upside down a few times. Well, everything seems to be okay so far. Let me get this uh, valve cover gasket out of the way. I don't see anything bent or broken. Everything seems to, uh, seems to be fine so far. The next thing I'm going to do is pull the thermostat and thermostat housing. I don't need to do this to pull this engine apart, but I want to see what the cooling system looks like, and this is the first clue we'll get. Well, not a lot to go off of. I guess since this engine's tumbled around a lot, it's had a good chance to leak everything out. Thermostat's not stuck open. That's what I usually see. You know what? Let's just go straight for the water pump. It's easy enough. Yeah. Water pump looks really nice. Uh, the coolant coming out of it does not look so hot. It's a little on the oily side. It's coolant goes there, not, not oil. But this water pump, it's definitely been replaced. It's an aftermarket unit. Yeah, this would be a, a great backup. Normally I'd pull the coil next, but the dipstick tube is bent over, and we're just going to get this out of the way. I mean, how hard could it be? No way. Huh. 
Sometimes you get lucky. Let's get this broken coil pack out of the way. Yep. One spark plug. I'm not even gonna bother. Not even, not even gonna bother. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the intake and exhaust manifold. Now this is not a cross flow head, which is why they're both on the same side of the engine. Now this is a 99 up engine and these intake manifolds do sell pretty well. It's an upgrade for the 98 and older. Oh, it doesn't fit. The earlier four liters that did not have the cast exhaust manifolds were very notorious for cracking the exhaust manifolds because it's a very long engine and the heat cycles, hot, cold, hot, cold, it fatigues the exhaust manifolds and they crack. Several aftermarket versions exist, again not very expensive and they're also not that difficult to install. So let's get these two cast manifolds off and then we'll take a look inside the ports. Well, there are some signs of rust and moisture in here. I did pick this thing up outside in the rain and it was sitting outside for some time. So that could be why. I don't see anything too bad. Oh, a lot of rust in that one. Well, let's start pulling these rockers and push rods. I'm just checking to make sure they all feel about the same in case there's a problem with valve train. Might be able to tell by how tight or loose these are. Well, I looked over the rockers and push rods pretty well. Nothing's bent or destroyed. The oil doesn't look that great, but I don't really see any damage yet. All of the ends have the same finish. Everything just looks a little dirty. Now it's time to crack the head bolts loose. I have no idea how tight these are gonna be. I've actually never pulled a head off of one of these. Okay, so they're not super loose. They're not that tight. Uh-oh. Water just came out of the hole for the exhaust bolt. That's not good. It's not supposed to do that. Not very loud head bolts. All right, now I read on the internet that the head's like 83 pounds, so that shouldn't be too bad, right? That's pretty heavy, yep. That's not 80 pounds. That just goes to show you, you can't believe everything you see on the internet. Oh, um, oh, did not expect that. Hmm, so now it started out okay, and then it became not okay, because this engine did the old compression delete. I mean, it's, it's, it's bad. I bet these two cylinders, no compression. It probably still ran. The cylinder walls are really rough. They're pretty much trashed. Let's go look at that cylinder head. Well, here's the cylinder head. 
And you can definitely tell that the two cylinders where the pistons came apart, they're pretty rough. Now this is an iron head and it still took some damage. But one thing I did want to focus on is right there. Look at that. Head is cracked. And that cooling jacket, there's a little bitty crack starting as well. Very common to see cracks in that area. This engine definitely got hot. Let's pull this head gasket off. I don't see any major, major damage, but I don't know. It's pretty dark between those two cylinders. Well, I also discovered a new trick. Rotating pistons. That's a brand new one to me. That one doesn't, it's just this one. Now, how could that be? There's no way this damaged the wrist pin, so. Oh, now it stopped. I ruined it. Oh, there we go. Now, we'll remove the crank pulley. We're gonna see if my puller works on this. It should, but they all should. Start zipping these bolts out of the timing cover. This looks like a job for old Blue. Oh, I missed a few. There's a timing chain. Everything looks perfect in here. I really don't see anything horrific in here yet. I guess now it's time to turn this thing over, huh? Let's see how this goes. It can either go bad or terrible. Or just fine. Uh oh, I'm hearing loose stuff inside. It's chunky. Chunky oil is not good oil. Lifters are falling out, but it's fine. It's still fine. Let's just um, knock the rest of these out, shall we? Where's my mallet? There's another one. I guess I could have gotten a magnet. That would have been the right thing to do. But we're already here. What was that? Uh-oh. So a nut just came out of there. Um, boy, that doesn't look like a nut that's supposed to be loose. Let's get this pan off. Oh, this pan should just lift right off. This is the nut that fell out of this engine when I flipped it over. And now we need to figure out where it came from. It looks awfully like one of these. But all of these are here. Oh, those are missing. There's two of them missing, so where's the other one? Did it already fall out? Or where will we find it? Well, this pan is a work of art. So much forbidden glitter. It looks like someone put anti seize in here, but the engine does turn over, so that can't be it. There's some larger hunks in here. I don't know that this is bearing material. I really don't know that that's what that is. But it is kind of brass colored. I don't know. It looks like bass boat paint. It's not a good look for oil. Oh, and look what we found in the pickup. Some little itty bitty nuggets. Yeah, those aren't supposed to be in there. Let's pull the oil pump. Normally I'd wait to the very end of the video to pull the oil pump apart. 
I'm not going to do that this time. We're just going to pull it apart right now. Oh, wow. It's tired. Yep. I bet you this was a higher mileage engine, just judging by the way this looks. Let's get this little... Oh, no. Don't fail me now. I'm not sure how well this will pick up on the camera, but these are pretty worn. There are lots of scratches. And it could be that debris went through there, or this engine just has a lot of miles. You can see by how dull the edge is here. They're usually a lot more machined looking than this. Now normally I just zip these nuts loose, but I want to see how tight they are. Since these are lock nuts and these two, well these two are missing and one of them I don't know where it is at all. So we're just going to check. Okay, now we can zip this off. Now let's check. All of this. So all the bearings feel okay. But oh. Um can I get that? There's part of a piston. That's not supposed to be there. It's supposed to be on the piston. And ooh, what is this? That's part of a ring laying of a piston, or maybe that's a ring. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Oh, mmm. Mmm. Uh oh. Yeah. No, that's bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. So first, we'll start off at the front. Nothing too terrible yet. Then, eh, there's more of that ugly oil. And then you get a look at the cam. That cam lobe is pretty worn. When we make our way further down. And, uh-oh, that, that's broke, really broke, but we already knew that. Pistons aren't supposed to rotate, but that one does. More sparkles, some more pieces, look at that, look at that rod, it's just coated in aluminum. And, yep, mm-hmm, part of a piston. More metal fragments. Let's get this apart. We're going to start pulling the rods and pistons out. You know what? That's not going to come out that easily. I'm going to uh, rotate this crank so all of these are in the same line. It'll be much easier to pull this apart. So I've rotated the crank so that I think I can get all of the rods and pistons out. I might have to turn it in a, another situation, but let's start with this one here. So you're going to loosen this one as well. I rotated the crank a little so I had a little better access. And I need to turn it a little bit more. Oh no! It literally just fell right out. It's fine. Now this is the broken one, so I'm not quite really sure how this is going to come out. Oh, it almost fell out. Okay. Let's 
see, will this come out? This doesn't want to come out. We're just going to let that hang out in there. We'll get the last two out. That's a later problem. That one also doesn't really want to come out. So now we're down to the final one. We get the crank pulled, and then we'll deal with those two that are broken, melted, blown apart. gross. I should have seen that one coming. Wouldn't you know it? I had a little nut hiding in there. All right, we need to get the cam out, but before we do that, I have to pull. This is where the distributor goes, but this is a crank sensor. It usually helps to get the right size bolt, or if it's just not tight, you can just use your fingers. And that's what drives the oil pump. Let's get this off. <laughs> Beautiful timing set. Now I need to get this cam retainer plate off. It uh, looks like a Torx. See how hard this is to get out. Gotta come out. Where are we stuck? We're stuck somewhere. There we go. So the cam journals don't look bad, but the lobes are pretty worn. Let's see if I can find just the bad ones. There's a pretty bad one right there. And you can definitely tell that the finish is different at the tip of the lobe, the peak. I would say this is a pretty high mileage engine. Now it's time to pull the crank. I wiped down all the journals on the crank and it doesn't look terrible. It will definitely need to be checked. I wouldn't just slap this in another motor, but I don't see any major damage. I don't think there was too much running through the oiling system. That's probably the worst one right there. But it's not bad. We've seen much worse on the channel. And the main bearings tell a similar story. There is some wear, but again, we suspect this is a higher mileage engine. Well, that leaves us with two rods and pistons that won't come out that easily. That one I can see daylight through. And this one is missing a huge section around the wrist pin. That's why it would rotate. There's what it's missing. And then there's just pieces of stuff. It's not as bad as we've seen, but, you know, it's not good. That one's been torched through. That's all powdered aluminum from the melted piston blasted all over the rod. It's pretty awesome. Now how are we going to get these out? So I, I would bet that the amount of uh, aluminum transfer on the block is what's keeping these from coming out. They hit like a, that one isn't such a, oops, that one isn't such a, a, a rock solid, but we're just going to, we're going to just tap them out. We're just going to 
Camp it out. So this is about as far as they come out on their own. Ugh, I can't. Oh, oh. There we go. There's one broken one. And then we're left with this one. Certainly don't want to hurt it, you know. There we go. Oh, rather religious piston there. Well, the block is pretty much done. I don't really know anybody that wants to put the effort into one of these. They're just pretty easy to find and lots and lots of damage. Especially in these cylinders, lots of aluminum transfer from melted pistons. Lots of vertical scratches that are super deep. I mean, yeah, you could fix it, but I don't know that it's worth it. And the rod bearings, they have a little bit of wear and damage, but it's not that bad. And all this likely happened towards the very end of this engine's life. Now the rods and pistons, different story. The rods all look somewhat okay, but this is the number one piston. It's really stiff on the wrist pin. Don't. Lots of skirt damage. And look at the damage on that piston there. That is rough. Number two, not as bad, but not good. Not something I would reuse. Three, really stiff. And then, and then we have four, or it's just all loosey-goosey in there. In fact, there's the piece of piston in here. I mean, look at the damage that wrist pin did to the piston. Of course, the wrist pin ready to reinstall, as always. And it's got a broken crown. Lots of debris jammed into it. Lots of ring land damage. This thing is destroyed. And, eh, don't worry about that. That one's got a hole torched in it. Look at the damage there. That is impressive. I've melted a piston in my own car and it wasn't even this bad. And I was running like 23 pounds of boost. This thing's naturally aspirated, what the heck? Some dents from, that's likely from rings or parts of itself being crammed into the cylinder head. This thing is just, it's done. Great conversation piece though. And number six, damage also, none of these pistons survived. Well, the interesting thing is when you look at this, there's the hole in the piston and it blew all of that aluminum all over the rod. My car did the exact same thing when it torched the piston. But that was from too much timing and boost. Not in a Jeep. Well, that was much worse than I expected. I expected to tear down some tired old four liter. Maybe it had some worn bearings, some cooling system issues. And instead I tore down a tired old four liter with obvious cooling system issues. We saw two cracks in the cylinder head. There might be more. And the head gasket was not so great. But those pistons, I've seen that kind of damage before. Turbocharged engines, supercharged engines, naturally aspirated engines that are high compression and run a lot of timing. That's the kind of damage you expect in one of those engines from a malfunction. But a four liter Jeep that's low compression, low stress, doesn't rev very high. What, what caused this kind of carnage? My dad taught me at a very young age, there's no law that says there can only be one thing wrong with a car. And that is also true for engines. We've seen many engines on the channel with two completely different problems. Was this related to the overheat? Was this some other issue? I, I don't know. This is the first four liter I've had this far down because like I said, they usually don't have problems. Now there's not a lot to sell out of this engine. The rods and pistons will make great desk ornaments if you're looking. Uh, intake manifold I'll sell and maybe a crank. Outside of that, the rest of it will likely end up in the scrap bin. 
Earlier this week, I posted the second video on my 95 Corvette. I bought this complete 92 parts car that had a perfect white front end. It'll fix all the accident damage on my car. Now, I'd like to address a couple things from that video. Number one, the mileage. On digital odometer C4s, I think that's 89 or 90 and later, the mileage is not stored in the engine computer. So yes, I disconnected the engine computer first. There's no mileage stored in that. It's also not stored in the cluster. It's actually stored in the body control module, and that's in the center of the dash, which was on fire, unfortunately. So what we ended up doing is fishing that singed body control module out and plugging it into another C4 we have on the lot, which is why we know this car has 68,155 miles on it. It's pretty good miles for one of these cars. The other thing I'd like to address is why I'm not fixing this car. Well, as you can see now with the engine out, the firewall damage is quite extensive. The dash harness is burned, the body harness is burned. There aren't a lot of cars out there that are worth this kind of repair. My car is a much simpler fix. If you'd like to buy parts off of this 92 Corvette, it's a six-speed manual, Dana 44. We've got a couple other C4s on the lot as well. You can go to importapart.com and peruse our inventory, or you can send us an email at importapart.com. If you are searching our website and you don't see what you're looking for, you can also send us a part request form. It's right there on the site. It sends us an email of exactly what it is you're looking for. As always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one. Now we're going to either prove or disprove what the internet says. We're going to weigh the cylinder head. I am not a strong man, but I am pretty sure this is not 80 something pounds. It's 71.